Hello, it's my pleasure to introduce Mr. David Throsby, Professor of Economics from Macquarie University from Australia. Welcome here. Thank you for talking to us. Thank you very much. It's nice to be here. How do you like the conference? I'm enjoying the conference very much. I mean, I think to get a lot of people together to talk about creativity and the, and the prospects for creativity in Europe is, is likely to be a very interesting thing, and it's turned out that way. There's some very um, uh, interesting people here, some, and, and of course, often with conferences, the most interesting thing is to talk to people in the, in the spaces between the main sessions, and so there's been a lot of that going on. And from the speakers, what was the most interesting for you? Uh, I think they've all been very interesting. The, the session that we've just had about uh, creative cities was particularly interesting and that also relates to the session yesterday afternoon that I was the moderator for with Richard Florida, which was also about creative cities and the creative class. Um, I think that the most interesting thing for me has been to see how strong the push is in Europe at the moment for creativity and for the cultural industries. I mean, I'm an economist and I work in the economics of art and culture. And so I've been very interested in the notion of the cultural industries and how you make a connection between art and, and the industries that, pr that produce things and can be a, a dynamic force in the economy. And here in Europe, um, and, and it's true in the Czech Republic, that there is a, um, a growing sense of the role of the arts and culture in the economy, but also not losing um, track of the, the fact that art has its own rewards, it has its own rationale. So um, I think it's, I mean, my point always is that there has to be a balance between these things. Okay. Um, but the, you are from Australia, so yes. it would be interesting to hear your view on Australian culture. What are the specifics of Australian culture? I think the thing to say about Australian culture is that we have in our country one of the oldest continuing civilizations in the world, which is the indigenous culture of Australia, the Aboriginal people. And they have, I mean, they have been inhabiting that country for 40, 50,000 years or maybe more. I mean, it's a very, very ancient culture and many of the cultural traditions of the indigenous people are still preserved. Now, they don't live in their, cult, in their traditional lifestyle any longer and they're not a large proportion of the population because the European um, arrival in uh, Australia happened 200 years ago and since then, of course, it's grown into a, a, a sort of mirror image of Europe, as, as it were, on the other side of the world. But the indigenous culture is is, is very strong and, and the interesting thing about it is that, it, that culture and art adapts to the times and so there's, there's Aboriginal rock bands and there are Aboriginal contemporary dance groups uh, and they, they're reinterpreting the stories and the, and the traditions of the Aboriginal people using contemporary means. So you don't mean those uh, bands for tourists, but you mean oh, no, no, something no. different? I mean sort of ser this is serious rock music and serious um, uh, fusion music, all sorts of music. Um, uh, their writers are trying to, you know, sort of write the stories. I mean, the, the Aboriginal tradition is an oral tradition. They didn't write, um, they, they, it was an oral tradition and a visual tradition. And so there's um, a lot of visual art and probably the most recognisable aspect of Aboriginal art on the international stage is the, is the Aboriginal painting. And that's fetching very high prices now. I mean, the, you know, there are millions of dollars for the contemporary Aboriginal painting. And they're all, they're very recognisable because they use the the traditional Aboriginal motives. So to be an Aboriginal artist in Australia, it's quite good. Yes, indeed, it's very, very good. I mean, there, there are continuing problems with Aboriginal communities because they tend to be disadvantaged, and uh, and and there's a really serious problem for governments to try to deal with this. And there's there's um, uh, you know there are health problems and so on. But nevertheless, the culture is 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 very, very strong. Yesterday you chaired a session with Richard Florida. Yes, yes. It was very interesting uh, and uh, he introduced uh, Great Reset. Yes. What is it? Can you tell us, tell us something about it? I think what he was saying is that um, we use the word recession and depression to describe the current situation of the global economy. And what he is suggesting is that what we should be doing is to thinking about resetting the economy on a different path. Now, it's a very um, wide-ranging call for a change in values, uh, which I think one would have to say is pretty idealistic yet. 
Um, you know, I mean, it's not going to happen overnight. Um, if you look at the, at the way in which it's, how long it has taken us to realise about climate change, for example, which is, you know, a major global problem, <clears throat> and we knew about it 20 years ago, and it's only now that we're starting to really take it seriously. And so it could be that to take culture more seriously is going to take a bit of time and reset the sort of economic compass, if you like, is going to take time. But nevertheless, I think the idea that what we need now is a rethinking of the way in which particularly, I mean, I'm, again, I'm an economist and I, and I see that the way in which the economy has been structured and the way the economy has been working has delivered us the sort of problems that we have now. And that's a real, you know, that's a real problem. Yes. I, I, one of the great experiences for me for coming to this conference was to, to, to meet and to see Vaclav Havel. He's been a great, uh, a great hero uh, as a playwright, of course. Uh, and uh, to hear him speak yesterday was a great inspiration for me and it was worth, I mean I've been to Prague before but I haven't met, uh, had never met or seen uh, Mr Havel and to see him on the stage uh, yesterday was a, was a great privilege.